ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Landy Lodge and even bigger, welcome to March Caprice. I want to give a special shout out to everybody on the March Caprice team that made this possible. My event, including all the events that came before and after. Thank you so much to everybody for your hard work. We're going to do our best to bring you a show today, but this would not be possible if not for the Sages of the Lodge. The Sages of the Lodge being those who donate as little as one gill a month. Let's give them a shout out before we jump into this. So major love to Charlotte, Alex, David, Chris and Maria, Scott, Shane, Jillian, Corey, Twilight Blaze, Nick Taborski, Kevin McBride, AJ, Michael, Andrew, Brendan, Gasha Snake, Mookie, DTRT90, Orpheus Joshua, Joshua, Jordan Krupka, Corey Syracuse. Thank you all so very, very much. And without further ado, I bring you a madman. Someone who goes as deep into this as I do. Big shout out to Josh Sheesh for joining us. Josh, what's <laughs> going on, man? Welcome How's it back. going, Landy? Thank Dude. you again for bringing me back on the lodge. It feels just as cozy as I remember. I'm glad. Make yourself at home. Uh, every time you're on here, man, it's always a spark. It's always a spark. Always gets a great reaction from it's the audience a good time. and the like. So listen, man, um, Sora needs saving. The whole idea of save Sora um, seems to be what's setting up the next arc. And we see that Riku mm -hmm. is on his way. We see that your Zora has been instructed to save Sora. Yep. And we see that Kairi is working hard so that she can join Riku in Quadratum. So that gives us three main candidates for who will save Sora, being Riku, Kairi, Yazora. So right off the bat, Josh, I want to know, what do you think? Who's it going to be between the three? I think we should make a case for all three tonight. But for sure. who do you think it's going to be? What does your gut tell you? So, and this is just based off not knowing too much about what Yazora's instructions are. And then given Riku has done this several times, you know, having to go and save Sora. So my brain, especially off of some specific quotes and just things that maybe they could have just been looked over, maybe I'm reaching too far into it, but hey, that's the fun of all of this. So I have some stuff I'm gonna read off in which I've made some quotes, some some notes to the side that kind of just lays down some groundwork for why I think Kyrie is gonna be the one that could save Sora. So your gut is telling you Kyrie's gonna be the one to get it done. I feel like Maybe each and Yazora, Riku, Kairi might have all a part in it, but just based off what this evidence has that I've that I'm gonna present, I think Kairi might play the more bigger role in saving Sora, but will have the aid of Riku and Yazora. Okay, so let's get into it. You're saying while Riku and Yazora may play a part, at the end of the day, Kairi's gonna be the one to close the deal. So throw it on us. What's your evidence? So the one thing that I got, and this could just be, you know, she was writing this letter to Sora in the very beginning, but this one little thing she said, which was, no more waiting for you to come back from your adventures. I feel like that can go a long way, even for just from the start, even before anything happened to Sora, she was already determined to mm -hmm. be the best Keyblade wielder she can be. So that way it's no more Sora has to save me. I can be the one along in the journey kind of carrying her own weight with being with Sora instead of kind, you know, being that damsel in distress that we're kind of used to. She swings a key blade here and there and then But we, we don't want her see to be we after. want her to be a big player, right? Like exactly. Kingdom Hearts has its big players and its small players. And we think it's time for Kyrie to catch up to shine to Sora and Riku, at least at that level. And it would yeah. seem like that this arc is putting a large emphasis on that. I feel I feel like it's hard yeah. not to see it at this point. And, exactly. you know, I have to hand it to you. It's like, there's no better way to elevate this character. And one, let me say, I really enjoy that they're taking their time with it. That they're not like, okay, we're going to give Kyrie a shortcut to catch up to Sora and Riku. It's like, no, yeah. she's going to go back and train with Aqua. And she's going to have what Sora and Riku don't. Hands-on experience with a mentor. Like, Sora yeah. and Riku, for the most part, are self-taught. Kyrie's going to get that real hands-on training from a master. From, yeah, from Aqua, of all people, of too. Of all people, right? So I think there'd be no better way to make it feel like this character has caught up to the rest of the Destiny trio than if she is the one 
to close the deal on saving Sora. <laughs> exactly. 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 Um, another point uh, towards towards the end before the final battle, it almost felt like as if Kyrie had some sort of gut feeling that there was a very big chance, either it could be 50-50, that something was going to happen to her and or Sora. And we finally, it took how many games, you know, and just times for them to finally share that pow poo fruit other than just drawing it to each other in the cave. Right. They finally share it. And she chose that moment to share it because of the message behind the pow poo fruit. And um, Kyrie had muttered the words to Sora, no, let me keep you safe this time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, I'm going to keep you safe. I feel strong with you. And to point that out is further, um, when Sora is going through all the different, you know, dive to hearts to save all of his friends and he feels, you know, lost, he finds that light in the distance and it ends up being Kyrie, and they, you know, float their way back to the events before everyone had perished. Well, let me, let um, me ask you before we continue, how would you respond to someone who says, well, in that moment, she already did save Sora. She saved everybody in that moment. So what would be the difference between her saving Sora here and her saving Sora in Quadratum? I think that can go where her belief in Sora, especially where the, I think it was the Charity that had told Sora that something is keeping him there. Yeah, Charity. I feel like it, that, yeah. I, I feel like with Kyrie's strong belief in Sora and with how Sora is always still, even in the worst situations, he's still optimistic. I felt like that was probably what was keeping him from further completely fading away was the like, strength of both their bonds basically yeah the little light in the darkness that never goes out very right. much so um personally i think what would really differentiate between the two if she did was the one to save sora in quadratum is in kh3 her saving sora and that whole um you know the light in the darkness thing that's her strength as a princess of hearts Exactly. Right? That's a good example of what that power can do, what that strength of heart can do. I think Quadratum becomes a platform where she can really succeed as a Keyblade wielder. Yes. You know, and show that like, hey, she's going to be more than just the, the pure hearted princess. She's going to be one of the warriors on the front line. Exactly. And I, I really think they have the ability to do that here. And this whole saga being set up with Sora being separated from the rest of the cast perfectly sets it up and you've already seen her go to such great lengths right like essentially a melody of memory she went to sleep for a year like she gave up a year yeah. of her life to be like yeah knock me into a coma and like pick apart my brain looking for clues she's devoted to saving him she's that no matter what it takes exactly she's do and that and that would be a good thing to flesh out too right is to show that like it's the start, it would give into the strength to protect what matters, right? If that's her driving force of power, if that's where her power comes from, a desire to protect Sora, I feel like that would be very on brand for the Kingdom Hearts series and to kind of- mm, Very much so. To flesh that out into an arc. Um, yeah, I'm glad I had your brain because you helped me kind of decipher and like kind of dissect it a bit more to help differentiate that. And, and with what you said, like right there, it was just like the strength of their bond that like, you know, the princess of heart, because right. as they're gliding away together, Sora is like heart eyes set on her and goes, I feel strong with you, Kyrie. And it's just like there that is, again, Sora's feeling strong with her by his side. And then, um, yeah, he also um, and then she responds with, I told you, Sora, you're safe with me. And then he responds, you're the one that kept me from fading away. Mm. I feel like it's just these little things where it's like a little hint here, a little breadcrumb there to where it's like, sure, in that moment, the saving's happening. But again, I could just be overlooking it. Dude, but then again, we are here to put fun. everything under a microscope. Exactly. So, like that's, yeah. that's where the fun all comes in with theorizing and just, you know, laying out whatever you could. Um, but yeah, like there's that re it's like a reoccurring focus where Kyrie's there for him. Um, she keeps him from fading away, feels strong with her. I really feel like she might be like the big point in where she's like the one to save him. But I feel like Riku and Yuzora will still have just as crucial roles in saving Sora. I feel like she might even need them to save Sora because, and I feel like we can. Well, I, they we are can, the three keys. 
True. Are they not? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yozora, it was Yozora from then with Riku's dreams, Kyrie with Sora's memories. Or was no 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 the nameless star or, uh, was a th- was a third nameless stage. star. Was it. Sorry, all right, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Keep. I was it in like, check. wait a minute, what did Yozora do? <laughs> Keeping it in check. Keeping it in check. Keeping it in check. But um, um yeah, yeah, with that we can kind of go more where I'm like, I feel like there's certain things, especially if we're gonna pull anything from like what versus thirteen Noctis was gonna be that is possibly within Yozora. I feel like there could be something there to go off of when because it's like with Yozora we we kind of really have to really like dig in because there's he's still so just like a mystery he's a mystery around his head yeah he's a, he's a mystery we can make a lot of guesses about who he is what he's inspired by what his inclusion implies um but for the most part we're gonna have to go on based on what we have and I think what's a big deal if you were to build the case for Yozora is that he is the one with the instructions to save Sora. To now, save Sora. Right. And it's like, who, now it's like, who was telling him this? Exactly. Where did that information come from? I'm inclined, honestly, to believe it's Luke Sword. Okay. Like, Luke Sword is his driver in that yeah. scene. He and dishes then he got the Sora, card. He dishes Sora the wild card and he says, A wild card, you've earned it, could turn the tables. About what? You know what I'm saying? About what? It clearly had nothing to do with Xehanort, nothing to do with the organization. Noth- nothing to do with his fight with Yazora, you know? It, it's almost like he was very well aware of this other side or where, it, and if, 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 if this is where he actually came from, because we only know Luke Sword as his nobody. So it's yeah, like- we he, don't know the sum, that's a good point. Yeah, and we, we and it's like, it's the, and it's like technically now, this is not the first time someone from the other side, unreality, has crossed over, if that's the case. The Nameless Star is trapped in the in purgatory. She's in the final world. She can't go anywhere. So if Luxord isn't, if she's not the only person that's crossed over and Luxord somehow made it and had some sort of like, let's say Master of Masters, you know, a waypoint somehow, some way on the other side, I feel like that could also work. If, if Luxord yeah. is from, you know, Unreality being uh, what's his name? Yazora's uh, butler, his driver, driver, escort, butler, whatever it's going to be. Although I, I'd say he would totally work as a butler. Can't you just picture Luke Sword <laughs> as a just, butler? He's such a classy gentleman. Like <laughs> <laughs> I, I could just Paul picture a. him looking super dapper in that like suit that he's wearing, and it would just fit. It, he real. would rock that. He suit. literally he just like does card tricks as he's walking through the hallway. <laughs> Just like shuffling them out just out of nowhere. Right, right. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit about this in the pre-roll, but if we were to sort of um, hypothesize about what's going on with Yazora, he obviously got instructions to save Sora, and his method for doing so was to crystallize Sora. So what is it about freezing Sora in time that would save him? And a theory I had about what this maybe could be, and, you know, we could t- discuss it here, is... I think Sora might be like fading from existence. Like maybe the price of being in the world of fiction is it eliminates you in base reality or, you know, your memories of you start to fade in base reality. And they kind of hint at this a little bit in Reminds because what is it that Aerith says? If we still remember him, then he must still be with us. So I'm thinking maybe that might be a ticking like time bomb or the memories of Sora because maybe being in fiction, you're destined to be forgotten, right? Just like Noctis from Versus 13. Being in the world of fiction makes you destined to be forgotten. So maybe just by Sora being there in proximity, he's fading from existence. So one way Yazora can save him is crystallize him in time so that he can't age, he doesn't move forward. He's just, you know, stuck, stagnant. And then this would also explain that when you beat him, Yazora goes, oh, my powers aren't needed yet. Why? Because Sora's still still kicking ass. He's still vibrant. Yeah, dude, it's, I don't know. I I see that maybe working out. I don't know. You you saying that, um, it reminded me, because it's like, I with the access now, thanks to the cage modding community, that we can just roam around Quadratum, you saying that, I was like, I, I, it made me think of one of the posters where I'm just like, I feel like some of these things, is because it's like, especially because some of them are in hit, you know, plain sight, oh, yeah. where it's like, they could just be like, oh, this might look like a sign, but this is maybe a little something that we're, you're going to have to access, you know, or like have capabilities of in the game. Mm-hmm. One of one thing 
And I was just like, wait, is this, is this going to be, you know, kind of crucial to being in unreality if you're an outsider mm. is there's that poster of a, of like a Libra. It's like a Fitbit and it says, keep track of your mind and body. And then there's all this shit going on in Quadratum or uh, with like hearts being stolen or identity switching and stuff. And it's mm -hmm. like, what if like there's <sighs> my brain's like freezing, but it's like, what if. <laughs> that Fitbit looking thing is going to be like this way where they can keep track of just like their existence, their fate, like if they're fading away or if there's like ways where they can, you know, still stay intact, still stay themselves. And that's like a crucial device uh, that they're going to need. I believe it says Libra, keep track of your, I, I, I have photos yeah. in my computer. I'm going to search for that while we're. Gotcha. I'll add a little speaking. side note. I know we're talking about Yazora now, but if we were to go back to Kyrie for just a sec, Let's yes. remember that in Dream Drop Distance, which essentially served itself as like a prequel to KH3, Riku was the one to save Sora. So Yeah, delving it, into his dreams. Yeah. yeah, so it only seems appropriate that now, pre-KH3, Riku saved Sora. Post-KH3, Sora could save Kairi, right? And then when you think about it, the whole series would be a cycle of the three of them saving each other, right? You know what I mean? Um so seeing as Riku already got it in pre-KH3, I almost feel like it makes it all the more likely Kairi could be the one post-KH3. So with that said, did you happen to find uh, any of the photos? Looking through them right now. Cool. Oh. I'll, I'll edit them in so that whatever you find, people will be able to visually Found see it. it. Found it. You got it? All right. Just I got a crystal freaking clear image too. Could you read out what it says on the side? Maybe there's a clue in there. Oh, that's my computer, not yours. Yeah, it says keep track of your mind and body. Oh, so you got it word for word. It says exactly you that. You got a word for it. my man. Look at this. This is why. This is why we bring him on, folks. This is why we bring him <laughs> on. He's receipt. like, oh, I, I think it said this. I think it said that. I'm like, you got the picture? Like, let's verify that was it. And boom, we got the fact check. Interesting, dude. I'm just gonna throw it to you in the in the DMs right now. Throw on it over here. I'll I'll make sure it populates Bam. on the screen so people can see it, dude. That is. That is absolutely insane. I'm going to look something up real quick while we're at it. But uh, you have – keep track of your mind, mind and body. Yeah, that, so do you that's think, do you think someone's trying to jack Sora's body? I feel like that could be possible. As, as, and that would be why you crystallize Sora, it too. Your yeah. Sora? Like oh. – I see, I see what you're doing there. That would explain oh. why your Zora would be confused by the appearance. He's like, oh. Huh, hold on one second. Oh my god. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh lordy. Okay, so some of the symbolism for Libra is like friendship, so I think it might just be like a little nod there. Might be work worth looking into uh, the word Libra, the etymology and stuff. Maybe there's some clues in there. But yeah. um, that would explain why Azora was confused by Sora's appearance and all the more reason why that would constitute saving him. Because I don't think exactly. that's an accident. It seems very odd that crystallizing Sora is saving him. But if you think of like certain ways Sora's like existence could be in danger, like he committed a nature taboo. So whatever forces are controlling nature might want to really dispose of him. And they might yeah. see him like a virus, right? And then, yeah. uh, and then Yazora's also confused as to how Sora can see him as himself when maybe Yazora thinks he's... that he's projecting as a different, you know, person. Yeah. And that's the nameless star makes a point makes a point about that. Um, that she's been changed, changed beyond recognition. recognition. His heart thought you, you yeah. wouldn't even recognize him. His heart replaced with another's, uh, like that. That's a little nuts. I'm gonna that's, look that's something a little up. Nuts. Just... I could see it though. That would and again the way this would work, this would serve as a really good way to establish Yazora's character, build him up, and that maybe it is a sign that Sora is fading if Yazora is able to beat him in combat. Um, yeah, maybe it's just like, maybe, like you said, Luke Sword could have very well informed Yazora of Sora and what he's strong, you know, what he's capable of doing. And it's like, hey, if at any point in time you tussle with this guy and you can, you know, take him away like that, there's no challenge, then he, he something's wrong. He needs to be, you know, put mm. to sleep. Because when you win, it's only when you win where Luke's third 
goes impressive is it not yeah. kind of just like i told you he can kick your ass <laughs> well, maybe it's not so much about sora maybe it's about the keyblade that's what's impressive because that's always throwing me off too when he says impressive, and he does have the yes the cross the cross the skull and crossbones but with a keyblade. with sora's hair specifically yeah very cryptic <laughs> very very cryptic but what i've always wondered what luke sword was talking about when he said impressive is it not and i was like is he talking about some device that lets you zora like lucid dream and interact with other beings Beings. but now that you think now that you brought that up i'm like oh maybe he meant the keyblade like hey look at you you zora mr with your bag of tricks your gun that steals things and freezes people and creates pyramids it's like yeah and it's like look what this kid can do with just a key with a keyblade <laughs> he wasn't even supposed to have one <laughs> yeah it was supposed to be R riku exactly and so this is the one thing, and I wanted to make sure I my Final Fantasy 13 brainstorm remembers this because there's tons of this no, Fabula Nova Crystallis within it. And uh, for, those who, Sora, for those who are listening oh, who may not know, could you just give like a brief explanation as to what Fabula Nova Crystallis is? Yeah, basically the Fabula, Fabula Nova Crystallis series was it was supposed to be involved with three different sets of games. So you had the 13 trilogy. Uh, type zero HD and then it was supposed to be the versus 13 trilogy and then it was still going to be 15 but Tabata changed so much mm -hmm. it took it out of that series and so it kind of though just, it was like, still littered with completed. a ton of it all over it was yeah it was still littered yeah. it was just so it changed to the point where it was just like yeah we can't consider this Fabula Nova Crystallis anymore Gotcha. but basically one of the things in there is when someone completes their focus they go into crystal stasis and it grants the LSC eternal life. And I think back to that when he puts Sora in crystal stasis. And I'm like, it's weird that he puts Sora in that after he dies. Cause like, that's usually when you complete your focus and it grants you eternal life. So I'm like, is it gonna be- Maybe it's just a signal. Friend? Maybe it's just a signal that Sora's focus wasn't the dark seeker saga. Right? Because if it was, then he it would have been time. But Yuzora's like, oh, he's not done here. He yeah. still has a purpose here. Let me let me dip out. He still has a purpose here. Because when he loses, it's when he goes into that crystal stasis. And that's I've that's where like that whole thing where I was uh when I messaged you and I was like, Hey, have you played the 13 series? Cause there was so much where I was like, this doesn't make sense. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, why is, why is Sora being in crystal stasis? And then you have fucking billboards around Quadratum that literally say cocoon. Yeah. Why? <laughs> in mind and body, the whole thing too. And without like going too much into like Final Fantasy 13 ish, like I believe cocoon is like the middle ground between like purgatory and above it's like that from what i ramp. remember yes that's that's yeah, how i understood so I'm like, it too i'm like well, what's going on <laughs> so that, yeah i wanted to make sure i got that right with crystal stasis but i was just like that that's still i'm like why are they using that with sora specifically it's interesting right um it Thanks. makes me think it makes me think we could see some ff13 characters in the future Please. it looks like that whole sort of um Fabio Nova Crystallis could make a comeback because maybe it never Especially got to send off it I... deserved and they want to find a way to build that back up again, you know? It's Especially those just without, without like spoiling you, those very few cutscenes that I sent you from when like uh, those two characters were there and they weren't really there. And then when their time was up, when they were about to leave after warning the character, like, hey, like you've been following the fake person this whole time, yada, yada. Like we're talking to you within a dream. And as they go to fade away, like how like Yazora kind of like illuminates and then he kind of like just dis disappears. Mm -hmm. That's how they disappear. They were Same. like, oh, Ooh. our time is up. And then they just boop. Interesting. So were, they, like, were they a dream? Was it, were they in a dream then? Like where were they? If they, if they were sort of projected there, were they in a dream like Yazora was? Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, it's been a very long time since I've played, but I think they were within Sarah's, okay, like own like brain or memory or like projecting themselves there. Okay. I I, I it's like I want to I want to delve deeper, but then I'll spoil. All right, then we can we can we can. Yeah, that's why I was like, it, it was kind of hard to kind of like go more into detail because I was without like, spoiling. Okay, then we can much, yeah. we can put it we can put an axe on that. Um. 
Okay, so we've touched on Kyrie. We've touched on Yuzora. Do you have any notes for Riku? I don't. Who I kind like, of he, feel he like is a the bit least hard. likely one. Because I feel like he's done so much that it's like the fan. I feel like the fan base at this point is like, Kyrie's not going to do shit. She's just going to get shut down again. And Riku's going to come in and save his boyfriend again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it makes it makes me wonder what they can do with him, right? Because here's the thing. I don't even thing. think he's he, I, like, sure, he's fully seasoned as a character. Like he has fully developed. But I, oh, my God, I feel like there is something much more grand to Riku than where he's at now like i feel like there's something a much stronger purpose or just let, let, something that he's completely unaware of that he can do let me say something and i'm gonna give a shout out to two people i'm gonna give a shout out to lands of masters and Man. to uh lunar lux uh, lunar. Lu lunar brought this up on a podcast lands has been sliding into my dms about this we've been chatting about this a little bit so we'll go into more detail on this one day but but destiny trio one of them haven't haven't really like died yet. Don't no do 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 no. Like, you know, like Kyrie died. Sora's Sora's like died. He's dead now, but he like he theoretically dies like almost every freaking time. <laughs> like Riku Riku turned to the dark and he went to the. But he never like got struck died. down. Like he got possessed. Sure, he wasn't him for a while, but he but overcame that. But he's never been struck down. Yeah, like it's got, it, it's it's to the point where the darkness is like, we know we can't get to you. We know that you're too strong for you're us now. So we don't even care for you anymore. Yeah. Oh, so I'm just like, oh no, if he, I will be shattered. He, you I will have be to, shattered. look, when you, you build something up and then you knock it down yeah. and then it comes back bigger and better. Like, because you're right, he, he's had a full arc. It was a joy to watch. He's probably my favorite character in Kingdom Hearts. Same. Um, but you have to do something. You can't just protect him now. He can't just be like, oh, he's the he's the Keyblade Master and he's going to solve like, the problem. Like, is Riku going to have to make some grand sacrifice? Like, he's <laughs> something, because he, he can't just go to Quadratum and solve our problems. Yeah, He can't it's not just go to Quadratum bad. and solve our problems. He, like, he needs to go to Quadratum and then maybe saving Sora requires he has to leave himself there, right? Because that's almost kind of the theme of Kingdom Hearts is we can never have it all, right? Exactly. Kingdom Hearts 1 ends and all three of them are separated practically on three different planes of existence. Then, you know, Kingdom Hearts 2 ends, but Roxas and Namine don't get to be their, their real selves. They, they're still inside Sora and Kyrie. They don't get to mm -hmm. be out of the shell. They give up their existence out in the world so that Sora and Kyrie can be together. So that doesn't keep even, all complaint. I was just going to say at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, now, yeah, everybody's alive. Well, except freaking Sora. So it's yeah, like, now Sora's one that's gone. Right. And even in Kingdom Hearts 2, like you pointed out, like even when they thought like, oh yeah, our, our adventures are over, secret ending, you so they get a little note from King Mickey where it's just like, nah, nah, nah. Like, hey, Sora. It's so like, like they our can never problems, have a break. Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, Sora. So our problems aren't over yet. <laughs> so exactly. we, we need you to prepare um because ansem and xemnas were just the beginning it's uh, like Kyrie and sora basically died in the same freaking game in the same, the same game well and well, then riku was just like xehanar <laughs> <laughs> it just freezes in midair when mickey freaking does sapsa or he does stopza yeah so some you, you can we talk about that for a split sec how sure. mickey could have just ended that man right then and there but xehanar just was like big brain and goes nah stopza Mm -hmm. Mickey could have just ended. He went with Ultima. He went in for the kill, and he yeah. might he might have been aiming for the head. I know, like he might have gone for no. the head. He he was like Mickey was like, yeah, that's where I draw the line. And then Zaynor was like, stop, so <laughs> like like he he was like, I'm ready. He like, was right. He plans for every event. Exactly. Because it's like because it's like how do you on the spot think like how can I counter Ultima? Yeah, this <laughs> like, like, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> stop. Oh, that Epic. I just wanted to touch on that because that was just wild. But I think it's possible that Riku does save Sora at the cost of his life or at the cost yeah. of his existence or something, and then it becomes about saving Riku again in some way in the next game, or Riku's trapped there or something. I don't know, but I kind of like the ongoing like thing that like it's never a perfect ending. Someone's what if we actually see death this time? Like, what if they can't come back? So what if when you I don't die think, in see, reality, I don't think, you die I, I, for good? 
I stra- I'm sorry to interrupt you about that. By the no, way. you're good. But um, I, I just don't think Kingdom Hearts works that way. I don't think there is such a thing as permanent death. Uh, I was going to say, I was like, what if, like, would you have to form it? Like, what if, like, it's, what if, like, the rules are different in Quadrato, man? It's like, if you actually somehow manage to perish there, you're gone for good. Because technically, like, they think that's unreality when that's probably the real world. Like, sure, there, they have all that magic. They can find ways to bring each other back. But it's like, what if in this unreality, this fictional world that is more realistic in a sense what if it's different there what if it's like you have to be real careful going back to that whole libra thing keeping track of yourself making sure you don't lose yourself there because it's like what if it's permanent kind of like in twooey if you die in the rapers game you don't get to come back oh okay now we're talking and you know what (laughs) you know i think we could see if you don't straight up see a reapers game i think they're gonna do something similar with what's going on in quadratum and it's easy to find the parallels but i'm not outright saying that sora's fallen into the reapers game but i'm wondering if something similar is gonna happen like can you imagine imagine in the next kingdom hearts game right just imagine this for a second it starts riku bumps into yuzora they first, maybe they clash for a little bit, but then they realize they're better off working together, trying to figure out what's going on. And then imagine Sora bumps into the Master of Masters. And the Master of Masters just plays it all silly, buddies up next to Sora, kind of plays dumb. And Sora, in, with his, in his, all his naivety and kindness, is just like palling up to this guy. Meanwhile, he's like luring him into a trap. Like, I like what he did with Lushu. Yes, yes. Yes, and I can it, see that because because basically Lucia was like his right hand man, and it's like, what if he's yeah. like, what if he knows? Because like, he even deemed him Lucia the traitor. So it's like, what if he's already aware that like Lucia is gonna, you know, become the homie? He's gonna switch around, and you know, and maybe he knows that he's been defying him behind his back this whole time. But it's like, as long as it, it, it bleh, as long as it doesn't mess with my plans, I have no reason to make him think like, oh, I see what you're doing just to even maybe throw Lushu off and maybe can see just how, you know, like you said, naive and just how silly Sora can be and be like, hey, I need this. I need him. This is who I actually Let me get this guy over here. Well, it would be interesting, right, if Sora got to keep the Keyblade that Xehanort kind of like passed towards him and now like the Master Master is like, ooh, I need that. Because that would explain what, because like, let's ask ourselves, like, what was the Master doing with Xehanort? Like, was he trying to find some link between Quadratum and the real world? Or was he trying to find a way to lure Sora into Quadratum so he could get the Keyblade? Like, I, I, it, that's some of the things that'll be interesting to see, too, is, you know, what... Very much, yeah. We need to figure out more... Like, the Union Cross finale did a good job of letting us know what the Master is up to, per yeah, se. Yeah, but now, now we need Dark Road. Like, I... And it's like, and even in one of the like updates where they're like, oh, it's delayed again, but here's some scenario snips that we've sent. And one of them is, and at first I thought it was a continuation of that scene from Remind, but it seems like it's even before that. It might be. It might be. I think it'd be silly if they literally gave gave us the same scene as Remind. If they gave us more, if it was like the same scene plus more, that works too. Yeah, like I even think it's like a completely, like I think Zane or it's not even in like his, uh, in the cloak i think he's uh i think if i remember correctly he's just, also we uh, might get the scene where he gets the cloak let me double check i'm, which I'm would on be their cool. twitter right now which would be cool but overall i think it's yeah a, yeah the, he's sitting on that rock and he's in his normal clothes and then the master of masters is standing right in front of him and says it can be a false kind of light mm-hmm. and that's something i've always wondered about too i felt like the master chooses very careful language and him re keep using this phrase false light false is, light is yeah. very very peculiar um I, w- I wonder if it's in reference to something but i can't currently wrap my head around anything but uh going back <laughs> going back to riku though um and rescuing sora it seems like he's already had his time in the sun to save sora like because he kind of saved sora in kingdom hearts 2 as well right True. Like yeah. helping him get up, become awake again and playing his part with Roxas and all of that. It's like, yeah, Riku's always saving his ass. Yeah. You know, Sora saved him in KH1 and now Riku has to eternally pay him back. 
it just almost seems too predictable that like, oh, Riku, what is the prize saving Sora once right. again? Like Nomura can't be out here saying we're looking to change the formula and then just have Riku save Sora again. And then, yeah. you know, I think about this is why I'm inclined to think it might be a sacrificial thing, right? Because you go back to what Lushu said at the start of Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't admire one guy leaping into danger if somebody else has to fall back in to save him. You know, oh. like it's just this eternal cycle, which kind of fits into what's going on with Kingdom Hearts and why we can never exactly. have this perfect ending is because somebody keeps having to sacrifice themselves or leap into danger to get somebody else out. And Lucio's like, yeah. what is the point of what you're doing? You're, exactly. <laughs> you know, you're just roping what? other people into your mess. So I, I have to wonder if, if it is to be Riku, I feel like it has to be in that fashion of, yeah, he saved Sora, but mm -hmm. he didn't solve the problem because now we still got to go there and save him now. Right. It's just kind. Of, it's just going to continuously be this endless cycle of a back and forth, back and forth. I'm sacrificing. I could probably almost perish if I do. Now we got to find a way to make me come back to life. Like, mm -hmm. and it's all, and like you said, death isn't a thing in Kingdom Hearts. It's like everyone at this point that has either perished along the way that they're all back. Like well, nominate beyond like they Roxas. They all have vessels now like well, they're yeah. people on their own and that's because i really believe kingdom Hearts. actually even though like death isn't permanent i actually do believe it's a story of like the hero's death like death and redemption you know what i mean yeah. like i feel like that's a lot of what death means in kingdom hearts it's a matter of redemption it's a matter of falling to your worst but then rising to your best yes. when you make your way back like i feel like that's it's almost like a, a metaphorical death of the soul, a metaphorical death and rebirth of a character's soul, in a sense. Kind of reminds me of what Andy told me once, walk through the fire, come out refined, not burnt. Exactly, exactly. Replace fire with realm of darkness and that's what you got. Exactly. Um, before we continue and maybe tread on some other points about Sora, Yazora, Kairi, do you think there's anyone else in this equation that could maybe save Sora or is poised to play a big role in saving Sora? Oh, that's a good question. Cause I'm like, I can't think of anyone other than the two people who are dead set on saving him. Well, technically three if we count you Zora, but we already know these three people are gonna somehow, some way play a very crucial part. So I'm like, can someone else you know, have some sort of, uh, hmm. That's I'll tell really you, interesting. I'll tell you the first one I think of, and it's Naminé. Because Naminé's got a oh. very, very unique power that, it, you know, the whole, anyway. I think they could use her to maybe go through someone like Ventus's memories, reverse engineer that back to Union Cross, you know, you know. Oh, I mean? because he, he everyone's back basically, and then the four colors are back. Like, yeah, and and Namin, they can use Namin to kind of you know shine a light on some of that stuff, some of that. And like, it's those, yeah, and it, and it, and it's not, and it's it's not new for Kingdom Hearts to like use memories or something to construct data to go back in time. It's it's exactly what we've been doing the whole time. Oh my, that's that's big. You you got big. You got mega brain, not just big brain. It's not mega that, brain. I'm, I'm a cra it's, it's not mega it's, brain. It's crackhead stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's a that's a good like that's a good like um thing to put out. Like that's a good like theory. I mean, I've, I I think about that kind of stuff sometimes. That's I don't know. that that me that now I, that's gonna have me thinking. Can I tell you my tinfoil hat theory? Oh, yes. Go for it. I think they will make a Kingdom Hearts MMO based on Union Cross. Bro, but I the trope that. the trope is that you're going through the memories of Union Cross. Oh, that would be so it's sick. Like, like, it's it, like it, that extraction of data. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it would be cool to kind of like, not like in this exact fashion, but in a sense where it was like, and I also just remember this too about Kyrie. They said, like, Melody of Memory barely touched on her backstory. Like, we've barely seen her backstory. So, like, there's still so much to learn about her. Mm -hmm. So, I'm like, if we get a side game, is it going to really actually this time have a focus on her? Because it's like, 
where are they going to really fit in this crucial like backstory of Kyrie in the main line? I feel like that's more like save Sora and like more stuff that's actually happening in real time, not really going back to, you know, a past tense. I would say give me a game like Dream Drop, but with Riku Kyrie. Right? That'd be sick. Instead of like Riku Sora in Dream Drop, where one's awake, one's asleep, that whole back and forth. Instead, now you got Riku in Unreality, Kyrie in Reality, right? And That'd then be you, really use, you use the Riku part of the story. What does that flesh out? That's going to flesh out Yazora. That's going to flesh out the Master of Masters. That's going to flesh out Quadratum. What do you use for Kyrie? With Kyrie, you can flesh her out. You'll obviously get the opportunity to flesh out Aqua. And then you can kind of pick and choose from the remainder of the cast of who do you want to get involved? Who do you want to play a role in all of this? I just feel like it gives I us such a unique opportunity. Like here you are with Riku who's interacting with the future of the series. And here you have Kyrie, who's in a sense got the whole past of the series behind her like sort of at her disposal in a way yeah I, I was just gonna say i was like having like a like a like a dream drop birth by sleep sort of thing especially like birth by sleep where it's like you have to do both you know all ventus aqua and tara's story to get like that final piece mm -hmm. of you know the rest of the game so it'd be cool to have like that dream drop sort of thing where it balanced between riku and quadratum Kyrie and you know their reality and then once it's done it's like a new scene becomes unlocked and then it's like it's like that the juicy just like now that we're really gonna rush. get that big push yeah, yeah yeah that would be i would love something like that that'd be really freaking and, you know, cool. I'm i would inclined, love that dude i'm inclined Especially, to think it's gonna happen they built her a whole move set in kingdom Hearts 3 and they didn't do that for a yeah. five minute fight that's what? so much work there's to make so that much character. that's so much work and it's like yeah, it's the smallest little thing in the world. But uh, there was a point where I got so high with Kyrie and and Xehanort that when she was she had a free fall animation. Like that's so yes. small. Yes. But it's like they even gave her a free fall animation. Like why would they go to that length to if just she, give her that animation? If she wasn't gonna be traveling through a world and platforming. Exactly. Or you know what I mean. And, and um, going back to um, I think this was. I think this might have been your podcast or it might have been Tree's podcast. It was some someone had brought up uh Faye Carly's like Princess and the Frog theory and how that would be a perfect world for a Kyrie game. Have you seen Princess and the Frog? I have not seen Princess and the Frog. So basically Oh, I hear it's a classic. It is. It's a fantastic movie. But there is a point in which Carly uh, Faye Carly had made and I had recently just like rewatched it with my with my girlfriend and it's like you have the like main villain who has you make deals with him and he has like these ties to like get you whatever you want and has like these connections to the underworld and how it's a like Faustian Kyrie, deal. it's a Faustian deal Ooh. and how Kyrie can you know possibly be manipulated and thinking like oh you know Sora is in the underworld and he has ties to the underworld and you know kind of having that and I was like, that would be so and as i watched it i was picturing that theory that she had you know pitched them or had told them and i go that's brilliant i go that would work perfectly that would go so well like give us a Kyrie game please <laughs> like please i i honestly i have to wonder i have to wonder if the next game is going to be like a string of three different campaigns or like a string of many or like because because like it's not under. just Kyrie they did this for, right? Like, obviously, there's Riku's move set, which is, you know, they nerfed him a little bit. This is supposed to be Keyblade Master, folks. Give me some good stuff. Um, right. You know, they built out Aqua and they built out Roxas. I have to think we're going to have a game like maybe you have a party of Kyrie and Aqua. You're going to have your gameplay with Riku. And then maybe you have something to do with Roxas. Because again, like, it. It's a lot of work to build out those characters and build out those movesets. And I was I struggled to believe that they did all that work for each of them to have like one fight. Now Aqua's got two. That's she fights Venetus, and then there's the Remind fight. So she's got two. But like Roxas and Kyrie, they they build all that for one fight. Yeah, and it's like, and it's like, and to say that it's fan, like, sure, we got fan service up the ass with Free Mind, and I'm here for it. But like, that is so much just for fan service. That is honestly, if they really set. did, 
if they really did it for just that <laughs> fight, then honestly, they deserve praise for that. Yeah, I was like, thank you. Like, that's sick. Thanks for doing that. But I'm like, it's hard for me to believe, like, that they were like, you know what? Let's put all this time and effort into building movesets and stuff for these characters just for this one specific Bro, fight, just because Kyrie, we want them to play as Axel or something. They gave Kyrie a warp strike. You can't tell like me. Like Noctuses. They Excuse can't, me. You can't tell me you give a character a warp strike for us to just not play as her again. Yeah. They could have given her the most basic fucking moveset, but they were like, no, let's give her a little fling here, a little, a little please work here Dude, over here. The, fr the free fall, the free fall special where she just like, like, like kind of opens her wingspan. And, just and can, like can we talk about her, 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 her transformation finisher where she just like has all those meetings. That's, just, that's like, what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it. It was so. I remember seeing that in the trailer and actually like losing my mind. I was like, like "Excuse me!" I was like, "It's about time, folks! It's about but time!" It's it's impossible that they just did all that to be like, "You're welcome." We did this like, no. There's you your one not. fight. We're calling. There's your one fight. We, we we heard enough about Kyrie. But you know, if you look at a lot of the spinoff games, not all of them, and I hate to call them spinoffs, we got to find a better word. I know because it's like they're crucial. They're actual games that are very, you know, there's just not a number. Storyline. It's just not a number, bro. If there's not a number, it doesn't count. But I got to call it like a side, like sideline of mainline and side. But it's still like mainline. Main. It's, it's still all one. It's all one plot. The like side just, main games. <laughs> it's silly. It's silly, dude. But of mainline and side main. I have to. <laughs> I have to wonder because a lot of the side games require playing as multiple fighters. Like you brought up Birth by Sleep. You play as three different fighters. Yeah, you play as three. Dream Drop Distance. You play as two different fighters. Recom 2. Recom 2. Um, and then there's uh, Days where you play as oh, yeah. Lord knows how many different characters. Like several. You know, Lark Scene is the first playable female in the series. Thanks to oh, Days. Oh, that's right. Thanks to Days. Fun fact. I don't remember much of playing Days. I remember when I had the DS back then. Well, I, it wasn't even my DS. I, like, stole my sister's. Just rushed through because I have the attention span of a squirrel. I could not play, a like, a, a handheld game. So I rushed through that game. <laughs> just flew. Just flew. I was but like, yeah. I need to play this under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, dude, like, all the a lot of these side games have multiple protagonists you could play as. Like, I kind of respect if you want to keep the number titles as, yo, the number titles, that's when you're Sora and you're only Sora. And again, three, let us play a little bit as Aqua here, a little bit as Riku there, but it was Sora's game through and through. And but it's I'm, also like... I, I actually, I just want to say, I would prefer if they keep the number titles that way. I don't, I actually yeah. don't want to play Kingdom Hearts 4 and spend like... A third of my time as Roxas, a third of my time as Riku, a third of my time as Sora. It should, the number titles to me should always be Sora's adventures with, with either Donald and Goofy or Riku and Kairi. Yeah, um, especially because yeah. Nomura even said like all the mainline titles will have Sora as the protagonist. They should, and I think these side games could be a good way to flush out, f flush out, flesh out <laughs> a lot flush of these it. other characters and their arcs and tie up some loose ends. Um... I just, I just feel like the next game that we have coming is going to let us play as multiple characters. And I would honestly be shocked if Kyrie isn't one of them. I was just going to say, I'm like, you really had me thinking. And you, you, it's like the whole time my brain's been going on, like, how the heck can we do this? Without? I realized, I'm like, there were so many things that they could have just from like, oh, Mickey exploring. And I... People could probably p throw pitchforks and knives at me, but we don't need a freaking Mickey game. Please do not give us a Mickey game in Scala. I don't want a Mickey game. I don't want a Mickey <laughs> game either. We got Epic Mickey on the Wii. That's exactly. all we need. You boot up Epic Mickey. He's got but, a nice um, kart racer coming out if you want to drive around the cars, Hey, Mickey. you got Disney. What is it? A speed storm or something, something like that? Something like that. But it, I'm with you. I... I I love the bailout system. Okay, Kingdom Hearts 2, Mickey Mouse coming to that bail you out. by surprise. All for that. All for I was that. like, I won't give up. What's this? Dude, and I was like, that. I'm Mickey now? <laughs> Dude, I just remember being a kid when that happened and just losing my mind. I, uh, and he's in the organization hoodie too. And it's, what's, it's, go ahead. What's funny is I never encountered that until I was on stream. Like, 
I played through Kingdom Hearts 2 on standard as a child and didn't like it have enough deaths or had that like happen where it was like um like that white screen came up and there was like I won't give up or you give up or whatever and I was playing through Kingdom Hearts 2 on proud mode in anticipation because like Kingdom Hearts 3 was a month away and so I played it on proud mode and I was stuck I think it was in Beast's Castle and I was, was it like the Zaldin fight I think because I remember I was in like one. a really closed off like room when this happened, but I remember I died and I was like, I won't give up. He's like, all right, so run. I was like, what the <laughs> frick? I was like, I'm Mickey now. What the hell's going on? So like, don't get wrong. I'm down for it in those small doses, like the remind <laughs> segment, that remind segment with him, I thought was really cool. That was cool. That I, was I really, really dug cool. that. I really dug that, but I'm with you. That Let's... actually got me emotional of it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> right. Let, but let's keep it. Let's keep it to the original characters. Yeah. I'm with you there. But um, but yeah, then they had like you know the whole Kyrie and Agua, and then um, I think there was like the 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 other like the 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 um, Wayfinder trio, like the rest of them, like weren't they going to like the realm of darkness or whatever to to look for go, Sora? But I've I've got Sora. a feeling there. I, I, prediction: They're just gonna come back. Yeah, I, I think we might just get Riku, an Riku with found them. him. They know where he is, right? Like that's the thing. They they know where he is. Like fairy godmother said. I, I feel so bad because everyone was like, "Bro, birth by sleep too," and I'm like, they're, "I know they're, li they're literally gonna come home for dinner." Like, like, yeah, like they left. Everyone's like, "Oh, we're gonna get so many games," and then and then fairy godmother's like, "They're they're wasting their time. You you need to come do this." Because like even even Mickey was like, "Oh, I gotta go get Riku," huh? and then they were like, "No, you stay back. Don't go anywhere." <laughs> they're like you no you could stay here mouse i thought that was the funniest thing ever that they were just like no you're not going you're not going, you're not not going does not man. like we don't need you leaving riku stranded in quadratum if he just somehow gets bodied and you don't know what to do for the next decade of you know the game's existence 100 percent 100 percent. we are running up on time a little bit we got oh, a no. few, we got a few minutes left to talk before we close this out was there anything left in regards to the topic that we haven't covered yet that you wanted to talk about anything on those uh those notes of yours basically all that i had mentioned was just like a lot of the quotes um about like what she said like with Kyrie, him telling her i feel strong with you you're safe with me you're the one that kept me from fading away it's like he he really seems to feel the strongest with her. I feel like that's gonna like that's just it has I'm to manifest it. itself further. Yeah, it, there you go, manifest it. Yeah, but it was just like just from that last thing you said about like an MMO, or I'm just like we actually have a few things where it's like this could either be covered in the next main line. Or maybe, and this could be a thing too. I don't know what kind of like, it kind of bounces off your idea of saying that like the mainline games should be Sora. But I'm like, I don't want us to find, like to like save him in four. I'm like, I feel like that's just too soon. Especially given like- Then you better you better hope there's two spinoff games coming, side games coming before we yeah, hit four. I'm like, cause I'm really like, cause, cause like technically, like especially if we, if we look at the roster for phase two, Dark Road and uh, Melody of Memory can kind of act as those two bridge games. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I said Melody of Memory. Yeah, then. maybe, maybe. But, I don't know. I'm I all, think, I, I go ahead, go ahead. But uh, but I was just like, I'm really thinking because I'm like, like you said, like we have the foretellers coming back and it's like, that's definitely going to come into play. Like they might even have this like, because like where the frick have they been? Where, like, where have they been? Like, have they been in unreality this whole time? And I actually think they might like, have, like, been, like, maybe they were perished. Like, maybe they were dead. Maybe Lushu, uh... Kind of like that whole, like, how with, like, Master of Masters having the waypoint and yeah. the memories of them. Like, maybe when he completed his whole, like, shebang as Zigbar, he had the no name, he has the memories of them. Maybe there's something in the X super box. That, exactly. <laughs> that could bridge the gap. But I'm just like, there's so much now that I'm like realizing like they have a bit to touch on. And it's oh, like, yeah. and it's like, are we going to get like a main side game? But like, it's going to actually be a juicy, like, I you think know, I think these piece. games, I think these games need to get longer. I think they the do. The campaign if, needs to be 30 plus hours now. It usually like, it takes like 20 to 24. They got to boost it to 30 to 40, in my opinion. Yeah. Like we have 
PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X. We have PCs. Like, there's no PS3, PS2. Like, y'all can give us juicier We can go. Games. We can go longer. Especially with how complex longer. it's getting. It's it's only getting more complex. They're only giving us more things, more questions, you know, to ask ourselves and to, like, figure out. Because it's like, what's going on with the full foretellers? How are you guys going to have that going on while Kyrie's also training with Aqua and how is she going to come into all this? How are y'all going to touch on Yazora as a background character and give us like, you know, some more, cause it's like, you can't just like throw Yazora in there and not give us backstory and like his purpose of being here and why he exists. And then we have Riku in Quadrat and like, there's a lot for them to touch on. A lot of like, moving parts. Really gotta... And that's why I'm saying to you, I think one of these next coming games, you have to play as multiple protagonists. Yeah. There have to be like three mini campaigns, like 10 hours each, you know, or even eight hours each, just something. Or, you know what? Run it. Like, you kind of like the idea of how you said an MMO, but it's like, um, not like in the sense of like World of Warcraft MMO and Destiny technically isn't an mmo but it kind of acts like one you have players from all over the world that you can play with like up to like four ish somewhat people or you can choose to do it yourself but the expansion sets for destiny are like a full length game so it's like they can give us like a full length thing and maybe to, maybe like the next game this is probably going to be a bad idea i'm not sure this is just my brain being like how can we figure this out but it's like we'll get a game and like in the sense of chapters like we'll get like a big expansion that adds to that and then it like before when we get the final one you know the following year we'll get kingdom hearts 4 and we'll kind of be caught up or something or it's like it's ready for the next main i one. could i could there's see there's gotta be something like there, that there's gotta be something they always have to bridge the gap between numbers titles number titles it'll be interesting to see how they do it now um or I, yeah they can kind of like with Dark Road and Union Cross, well, Dark Road is more of the chapter based thing. Mm -hmm. They couldn't use that formula, like announce, like, I don't know, like Kingdom Hearts, I'm just gonna say Kingdom Hearts Project Oath, and then you'll have like five chapters, but they're gonna be kind of like Final Fantasy said Remake. We're getting different parts, but each part is a full length game. Yes. Yeah. They can I give that to us in the Kingdom Hearts format, mm -hmm. and it would really flesh out what we need to have in order to get on to number four if Sora is going to still be the main protagonist because right now that boy needs saving he needs what some is... he needs some saving <laughs> i think it like you're getting to it may take more than one game to save him um before we wrap up i guess the last thing i would say with everyone we've discussed today because i went into this i didn't know who i think it would be my best guess uh, my best guess i'm gonna go with you honestly i think it is gonna be Kyrie. uh there may be some bias in there because like Sora, and Ky <laughs> like Sora and Kyrie to me like as a couple, the two of them hit me in the feels. And we've yeah. seen we've seen Sora save Kyrie. I want to see Kyrie go in there like a warrior and save Sora. We know Yeah, her like heart. Riku's done we it too many times. Too we many love times. Riku, but and we know Kyrie's heart can save Sora. But now I want to see Kyrie's hands save yeah, Sora. Yeah, like they've you know already proved saying? through sharing the Palpu fruit where their destinies will now always be intertwined and they'll always be a part of each other's lives. But they also have, like I've mentioned, and that's why I brought up those quotes, those that symbolism of, mm -hmm. I'll keep you safe. I feel strong with you. I told you, you're safe with me. I want to be a part of your life no matter what. No more waiting for you, you to come. come home on your adventures. Right. She's going to go to him. She's yeah. going to go to him. Um, we've got about 60 seconds left. So before we wrap it up, uh, Josh, where can the people find you? Y'all can find me on YouTube, mainly Twitch, and basically all over the web, Instagram, Twitter, at Josh Sheesh. Um, for Twitch, I do a ton of RPGs, JRPGs. Mainly, we play Kingdom Hearts, going through a ton of backlog this year. But yeah, that's where you can find me. I'm basically everywhere, at Josh Sheesh. Very simple. Rock and roll. Landy, Landy will probably have all the stuffs in the description. It'll all the be there. Below. It's always there. It'll all be there. Another big shout out to you, Josh. Thanks for coming on and doing this. Thanks for having me as always. I love picking each other's brains and just just cracked out Kingdom Hearts theories. Love this. Dude, <laughs> I, exactly. Love this stuff. Um, I want to give another huge shout out to March Caprice for putting all this together. They are a shining yes. example. A shining example of what's special about the Kingdom Hearts community. And uh, last but not least... Big shout out to the sages who make all this possible. But without further ado, sickos and normies. Thanks for hanging out. Peace. Peace out.